You are listening to the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network. I'm Katrina, and I love anime. I'm Steven, and I'm aware of anime. But what if that affection could rub off? Perhaps that excitement in her eyes got me curious. I could offer up some solid anime. I could give them a watch, just to see what all the fuss is about. And maybe, just maybe... I could learn to love anime, too. Welcome to Inspired by a Weeaboo. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Inspired by a Weeaboo. I am your host, Katrina, and with me is my husband, Steven. Hello. We just finished episode 21 of Full Metal Alchemist. Steven, what did you think? There's a lot going on here because we're still kind of in this arc where a lot of things seem to be coming into fruition. We're starting to see a few twists and turns. Mm -hmm. Kind of pick up with Al and the butcher. And Al's still kind of saying to himself, I'm Al or Alphonse Elric. Just so heartbreaking. (laughs) But I noticed that he, I mean, granted, there was a lot that was going on that Mm -hmm. would have distracted him from that thought for the Mm -hmm. moment. So it it almost got pushed by the wayside after Scar shows up Mm -hmm. and intervenes and he wastes no time taking care of the butcher, at least blowing his arm off. I was hoping it was going to do more than that. But then the butcher gets into Scar's head the moment he lays eyes on the tattoo. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I believe the butcher knows what that is. He might. Yeah. But he also seems like a worm that likes to talk his way out of shit. And I think yeah. <laughs> he saw that as an opportunity to distract because when he says that, he lurks away, finds a little button, and sets off a bomb. Mm-hmm. And obviously he takes that opportunity to scurry away. But that seems to unlock that guy you mentioned yes. an episode ago. Yep. And <clears throat> it never did say who he was, but they just kind of showed him get up. He's a tall son of a bitch. Yeah, very tall. <laughs> and then he seems to lurk a little deeper into the prison and starts mm-hmm. letting loose others that I don't know if they like him or not, but they seem like there's something off with him. Well, the, their eyes were the all glowing. room he unlocked was the room to the chimeras. Oh, okay. Which, yeah, we got to talk about the chimeras, or at least we'll get there, because (laughs) back with Ed, he's still talking with the Slicer, trying to pretty much hash out what he's there for. Obviously, he's there for the secrets of the Philosopher's Stone, and the big Slicer is what I'm going to call him, the older brother. Yeah, yeah, big brother is the helmet, little brother is the the torso. (laughs) Right, so big Slicer says, you know, we'll help you, whatever we got to do. And then Ed kind of reluctantly agrees. He's like, yeah, all right, well, we'll figure it out. And then a little slicer, Mm -hmm. because they were going to drag him along or trying to figure out what to do with him, he just decides, "Eh, you know, just go ahead and kill me. And Ed reiterates, I'm not going to do that, not going to do that. And little slicer just takes it upon himself to end his existence. Yep. And waste no time in it. And obviously that hits Ed uh, pretty hard. Cause mm-hmm. he's, I, I guess I understand from one point of view why that would bother him. Yeah. But <clears throat> that's what he wanted to do. You yeah. Know, he had no ties to to these people. I think not only did, you know, he see himself in a way in the two brothers and everything else i think it just hits him a lot harder with the fact that al is in that position Hmm. so what if al felt that way like he just couldn't go on living as you know a empty suit of armor so he's just going to end it all so i think that's why it hit edward so much and then just the fact that he you know again because they did reiterate the fact that ed views them as people even though they're no longer people Mm. and they weren't good people 
But I think it comes from the fact that Ed looks at it like, you know, that could have been me and my brother. We could have went down a horrible path and done bad stuff just like they did. But that doesn't forgive their sins. But I think he just wants them, you know, if they could become human or even if they stayed the armor, do better. Yeah. And I think it just hits him really hard because he thought that, you know, he had gotten through to him and thought that him viewing them as, you know, people, as human, then that would make them appreciate, you know, the life that they had. Mm -hmm. But obviously it, they were they didn't want to live like that. Sure. <laughs> no, I mean, I understand. And it's not really much of a way to live like. The other exactly. guy's just nothing more than a helmet. I mean, what are you, you going to do? Exactly. So it's, yeah, from that perspective, I get it. Now, here was where I got a little confused because mm -hmm. they cut to two prison guards. Mm -hmm. Was this still the same prison that, we, that they were no, in? No, this would okay. have been a separate. Uh, I think it, well, obviously it's got to be close to it because they're filling like the bombs and the aftershocks and everything. Mm -hmm. But. It's not the, say it's not, I don't think it's the fifth prison because there's not supposed to be any soldiers there. It's just kind of like a skeleton crew of these people, but it might actually be the other half of it. Because hmm. if you remember the look of the prison, it kind of has like a, uh, not really a horseshoe shape, but you know, goes up, cuts across, comes back down. Okay. So it might be another half. I don't think they specifically state it. But, yes, that's where you meet Kimberly, who's and, locked up. <laughs> okay, so that was the one that they... Well, yeah, sorry. No, duh. It is the prison. The prison's right next door to the Lab 5, which is where they are. Okay, so that's what I was trying to make sure of. So the prison yeah. is still active. It's yes. the lab that's The lab that's not down. active, yes. Okay. That's what I was trying to figure out where I was getting my... my stories jumbled because i thought the prison was abandoned but it was the lab that was abandoned near yes. the prison yes so they could do Move all the prisoners gotcha yes <laughs> so you confused this, me <laughs> yeah that well because i was confused too i was like so wait a second so all right so the security guards are walking down now was he the the guy you said kimberly yes he was he was just locked up yes he was just locked up in the prison okay and they were just checking on him no, they are taking him um, because he had been summoned. Gotcha. And along with other prisoners. That is also the time where, just out of the blue, mm -hmm. Brigadier General shows up. Who yes, we thought the, was dead. Um, bl blood Iron Alchemist, I think, is who he was. The one with the giant mustache giant the one that scar mustache. blew his head off yeah and he's just marching in doesn't say anything doesn't do mm -hmm. anything he's just marching down the hallway and i'm like wait what so i thought for a moment it was a flashback be like no this is still present day yes and then they just cut away that's why i'm saying all this needs to be a movie because that was just one segment of this episode and we never come back to it so yeah. it was just this random shot and i'm like what what you will, you'll you'll get more. I know, context. but you just you, <laughs> a little fragment, and that's all we get. And now we're like, yep. well, how is he alive? So we got to wait for another episode to find that out. But then we also find out lust and gluttony are lurking around the prison too. Mm -hmm. They found one of the. I'm assuming one of the holes that the bomb blew down in. Uh, well, that would be the hole where um the guy in the cell got out. Ah, okay. that's why gluttony was freaking out about it. Oh, <clears throat> okay. So there's more to him. Oh, yes. So we'll go, um, <laughs> obviously, there's more to him. We don't, I don't know anything about him yet, so we'll get there. Uh, so back to Ed and mm -hmm. Slicer. Mm -hmm. They're walking down a corridor, then suddenly they get attacked by what looked to be Chimeras. Chimeras. Mm -hmm. And as they're getting ready to brawl, there's a whistle, and then a big Chimera shows up, and it's Tucker. Mm-hmm. Who they were told was killed, but again, yep. this all adds up to the, what the prison is, and apparently there's a lot more going on than just 
whatever they've been doing with the philosophers. I mean, there's there's a whole lot yeah. just going. Whatever perverted science they're trying to work out, they're doing it in this lab mm -hmm. of every angle, especially about the philosopher's stone. That seems to be what this is, like a lab for the philosopher's stone, or at least to try all the most extreme ways of trying to create it. Yeah. And I, I can remember like seeing this episode the first time and being so freaking angry that Tucker still drew breath. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even the fact that he's a chimera now, it was just like, Oh, I was so mad. <laughs> yeah. Cause he didn't deserve it. No. <clears throat> so with that revelation, Mm-hmm. He kind of leads Ed with him to go see his his works. Yes, his but lab. Meanwhile, Scar and Al are finding their way inside because mm -hmm. they followed the butcher and still so haven't caught up with him. And they're they're kind of having a, a bit of a discussion about things. And I was kind of hoping that they would have a moment to have a, a discussion in hopes of clearing the air somewhat. Yeah, because. Understandably, his frustration with the Philosopher's Stone and what that entails, sure, I could see where he's, he would be angry, but mm -hmm. understanding it from the opposite end, and Al says, hey, this is why we're after it. But again, they didn't really get to f hash it out too much, yeah. but I was kind of hoping that would make him reconsider. Don't yeah. know if it did, but you know that's because they got interrupted. But we did see a flashback to... Scar's brother, who yes. did the tattoo. Now, they didn't show specifically because I thought that was the whole point of showing, doing the flashback because it was about talking about the tattoo. Yeah. And we don't really get that yet. It was more of a flashback to, I guess, his brother was attempting alchemy yeah. at one point. Did you, just from the scene that it showed, did you gather what kind of alchemy he was attempting i'm gonna assume the same type that uh ed now did because yeah. human transmutation the girlfriend mm -hmm. or his girlfriend seemed to be like a big thing in his head of course he didn't really mention her but you piece it together well because he would kept saying her i gotta yeah, get her back as he or starts rambling he you know says he's got to get her back now that was in I guess farther back when they were younger, and then yes. they flash forward to the Ishinbul War mm -hmm. or Ishbalian. Yeah, Ish keep, I don't know why we keep adding different. <laughs> anyway, Ishbalian War that's going on. Scar's fighting. He's looking for his brother, and then his brother has just lost it. He's yep. tattooed from top to bottom, bare ass naked, and just <laughs> walks into the battlefield. And he seems like he already knows everything. That he needs to know. Because when you ask him about the stone or something is said about the stone, he's just like, it's just got, it's got to happen. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got to die. And he's just, he's gone. <laughs> so, Scar, you know, that was about the end of the story. Watching his brother walk off into a battlefield. His bombs are going off. And then cut back and Lust and Gluttony show up and encounter mm -hmm. Scar and Al. And now this is the first time Al's actually getting to see them because neither Ed nor Al have seen them yet, right? I don't think so. No, because he seemed like, who were they? And then when he mentions that they are mm -hmm. homunculi, he was like, <gasps> homunculi? And then, of course, that's where we have to cut away. <laughs> but then we get back to At or Ed mm -hmm. and he's being shown the secret lab of asshole tucker <laughs> and you know ed's questioning you know well after all the stuff that you've done it was like how did you pull this off and mm -hmm. did he give an explanation because i don't recall well yes when he um when ed looks behind the curtain and you know we see nina yes. or a nina version a nina camara mm -hmm. and he says that he kept trying to bring her back over and over and over again, and eventually it turned him into what he is. Mm. So you don't get like a specific explanation, 
But whether it was him just performing experiments or just the whole equal exchange, Mm -hmm. it some, you know, it turned him into a into a chimera. And if you've never seen the show, you got to understand when we're talking about he's a chimera, it's not like he's it's some beast with Tucker's face. He's like bent over backwards. Yeah, it's on its like back. It and, almost looks like a kind of cute looking teddy bear with really long pointy ears. And then when he kind of leans, it would be his like technically leaning forward because hmm. the the fuzzy part of him doesn't have a face. Right. But when he leans forward, then you literally see Tucker and it's his face and his torso and his arms are like going over the front of the fuzzy part and like down into its sides. Like he's literally fused into it. Mm. So it's kind of, I mean, it could look a lot worse, but it's disturbing nonetheless. Just the way he's kind of distorted and yeah. contorted all over its top half. I don't know. It's just weird. <laughs> but the, yeah, Ed finds Nina or Nina Camaras off in the, there were several, weren't there? There were like three yes, jars. Yes, it only focused on the one, but yeah. yeah, you can see other ones in the in the tubes. Mm-hmm. And then he, or Tucker, leads Ed into another room, mm-hmm. which is like almost like a fake Philosopher's Stone production <laughs> lab because it, the the little liquid versions of them i guess they can harden Mm -hmm. there's just like five tubes all have like little nozzles on them and it's in the middle of what looks to be like a big alchemy circle Mm -hmm. and he's just like you know you can you can have it you can do it you can fix it so i'm assuming the idea is that they have they have perfected it up to this point but they're needing that that crucial ingredient so they have this setup to do mm-hmm. what they need to do it's just getting to that last step and i'm going to assume that tucker does not know what that is it's, otherwise they would have done it by now they need somebody powerful enough to do it oh that's what he was saying is that none of them are powerful enough he needs somebody who has powerful enough alchemy and that's where ed goes on to be like i'm powerful enough <laughs> yeah which you know, the boy should be a lot smarter than this, especially being manipulated by that shit ass. So Yeah. Hopefully he's not just going to fall into a trap, but it looks like he's being coaxed into falling into a trap. Yeah. But meanwhile, you know, as as he's getting coaxed in, we see that Scar and Al are fighting the, the other two. Yes. Of course they didn't. It was one of those we got to give you a few punches and then we're gonna be like, nope, we're gonna leave you hanging. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I was really wanting to see Al tear into Gluttony and he, he got a good punch in on him. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we get to see him beat the hell out of him because he thinks he's gonna eat him. <laughs> Come on. So I'm trying to be on Scar's side here. I want him and Al to kind of connect, and I've also noticed. Mm-hmm. The running theme that they have used in this show are brothers. Oh, yeah. How many times have we seen pairs of brothers mm-hmm. at this point? Because this would make two, four, the other two, six, not counting the Elric brothers. I can remember at least three other pair, mm-hmm. and there might be another pair that I'm forgetting, but... It's always about the these brothers that they encounter and then they can relate to them in some way. Yeah. And I guess there's uh, something poetic about it, but at the same time, it's like, not that people don't have siblings, but everybody they encounter is a brother. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, there's other characters that have multiple siblings. Well, yeah, but it seems like the most the the important ones uh, for their story seem to to be brothers of of certain well, kinds. I think it's because again that's how Ed and Al are able to relate to them. Hmm. So even when it came to you know the Slicer brothers, like they were horrible freaking people, but Edward still related to them in the whole brotherly love and 
protecting each other and everything else. And and funny enough, they after they got their asses handed to them, they seemed to have mellowed out. I mean, I, again, I'm not condoning anything that they did, even though we don't know all the details, but we know they were serial killers. Yeah. So they had to have killed some, if not many, people. And I don't know. They just kind of seem like they mellowed. You know, and they're just trying to be relatable they're in some way. Honorable. That hmm. I mean, he literally kept his word. If Edward defeated him, he would, you know, show him or answer his questions hmm. and everything. And Edward defeated him fair and square, so they had no reason to, you know, be assholes to him. Yeah, true. <laughs> they but have honor. <laughs> they're men of their word. Yes. But I don't know where we're going from here, but I'm ready to get into it because, I mean, there's they keep leaving us with these cliffhangers, <laughs> and the story just needs to keep going. Yep. So, I know. I'm ready to get into the next episode. All right. Let's do it. All right. Well, lead us out then. Weebs, go tell your friends to listen on their favorite podcasting platform, even if they don't like anime Maybe let them listen to a few episodes. I was thinking about this the other day. If you're not an anime watcher, but maybe you want to to kind of entice somebody, have them listen to a few episodes. Maybe listening to the way we describe the story might entice them to go watch it. Yeah, you know, maybe. just a, just a thought <laughs> because I was thinking about that. I could think of a few people that don't really care to to watch it, but the story is good. Yeah. And if you hear it well enough, you may. Like, Wait a second! I don't want to. I don't want to spoil the rest of this because this sounds really interesting, and I want to go watch it. Mm -hmm. So think about that. If we're talking about an anime, you want to try to get someone to watch, kind of like what's happening here. <laughs> Let them listen to a few episodes and say, "All right, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? You think we can get in there? It might surprise you. Who knows?" Uh, and if you want to listen to episodes early. Patreon.com slash Pencil Paper Productions and keep up with all things at PencilPaperProductions.com slash Inspired Weeboo. All right, my little weebs. We will see you next time. This has been a Pencil and Paper Podcast Network production.